This is uh, May 13th, 2013, Rhinebeck Town Board meeting. We'll start with a pledge with our Girl Scouts, Jordan and Maddie, from uh, local Girl Scout troops. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Good job. Yeah, Thanks. Oh, Where'd they go? I need more Girl Scout cookies. I got them at my house. He wants some. I need some. Do you really? I think so. I go through them very quickly. All right, uh, for announcements, Grievance Day will be held May 28th. The time is yet to be determined. May 28th will be Grievance Day. There is a burn ban now in effect through May, May 14th. Uh, no burning is allowed. Beginning of May 15th, small brush fires are permitted. For more information, go to the DEC website at www.dec.ny.gov. Uh, the Town of Randwick Highway Department is hosting a household hazardous waste an electronic waste disposal day on June 1st, that's Saturday, June 1st. Registration of payments are required before June 1st. You can contact a Dutchess County Resource Recovery Agency at 463-6020. You can call Town Hall if you, if you need that number. Um, brush drop-offs brush drop have been resumed at the town dump site on the last Saturday of every month through November, that is from 9 to 1 p.m. Uh, so once again, that's the last Saturday of every month through November, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. The transfer station will, open, will be open on Thursdays from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. through August 21st. Uh, this, is a, this is an addition to the regular Saturday hours, 7 to 2 p.m. Uh, the town hall will be closed Memorial Day, May 27th. Um, the town board will be meeting normally um, on, wait, it will be held on the uh, Wednesday the 29th. Hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Wednesday the 29th will be the next town board meeting. Um, and you can see all your favorite town board members in the parade on Memorial Day. Uh, also, the town pool will be open on weekend days beginning May 25th from 1 to 7 p.m. So May 25th from 1 to 7 p.m. town pool, uh, there will be holiday, there will be a holiday free swim from 1 to 7 p.m. on Monday the 27th. Uh, okay, any questions you can call town hall, 8763409. Any further announcements? Um, I'd just like to announce that I just gave John a check for $33,000 from the uh, Frost Memorial Fund. It's their second installment for the trails, mm -hmm. and we really appreciate that they're doing that for us. That's great. Um, let, um, let me mention that we are in need of more people to work on the energy uh, task force. Uh, we all read in the New York Times that we've reached carbon dioxide levels not achieved in several millions of years. And this really is a small threat. Now, obviously, all this carbon dioxide is not coming from Rhinebeck. But if each community can do uh, its own to reduce carbon dioxide, uh, imprint so i implore those in the audience and those listening in and those we can uh, talk to to join the uh, energy task force because we uh, sorely need help in that area okay. any further announcements uh, we have an approval for the um april 27th 2013 minutes motion and second motion second um, all in favor, aye. 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 Anybody opposed? That's so moved. We have, uh, tonight we have a public hearing. It's, um, where's John at? Is it too early, John? Are we going to wait till 7 or are we okay now? I'm going to say 7. I probably should, right? Yeah. Forget. 7. 
said seven, so we can. Wait. Yeah, we'll wait. We'll uh, hold off. We do have a public hearing for the uh, local law for the amendment of um, town code chapter 125 zoning, but we'll wait um, till um, about eight minutes till that's supposed to happen. Um, at a request for a public comments, but I don't see the requestee here, so I'm going to hold off on that. Request is here. No, no, no. Request for public. Oh, request. For for public comments. Oh. All right, that's something else. But uh, you know what? I'll open the floor for a public comment. If anybody has some. This is your presentation. No, we have a public comment period right now. If you. Somebody want to make a public comment at this point in time, or this is a public comment on what? What are we talking? Well, about? I um, I had a call from a, a member of the community who wanted to make a comment, uh, um, so I offered about the fairgrounds, but she's not here right now, so we'll just wait. All right. All right. All right we do have a couple of presentations tonight. Um, one is about uh, asbestos removal on town hall. Are we ready for that? Okay, so the first presentation is Paul Rodriguez uh, from Quest, about asbestos removal in Town Hall. Hello, everyone. Hello, board members. Thank you very much. My name is Paul Rodriguez. I'm the director at Quest Quality Environmental in Wappinger Falls, New York. Um, about a month ago, I received a call from Mr. Fitzpatrick to come here to the building to assess and provide an estimate on some anticipated renovation work, specifically the heating upgrades project, which is anticipated for later this year. Um, obviously, to perform the heating upgrades would be uh, impact, impaction of some potentially suspect asbestos-containing materials present in the building. Uh, Quest, Quality Environmental, what we do basically is we do the front-end work uh, the investigative type aspects of the environmental assessment. Um, we will come into the building, we will perform visual as well as physical collection of suspect materials. We will have those materials analyzed by a third party laboratory. Um, we will issue reporting on what we have found. We will actually act on the behalf of the town of Rhinebeck to provide uh, specifications to assist in attaining outside contractors, which will come in, provide pricing to remove or remediate the identified materials, if in fact there are any. Um, during that time, if in fact there is an abatement project required, we will also provide third-party air monitoring for the district and provide project oversight of the uh, general abatement project. We actually do not physically remove any materials ourselves. We will do the front end identification and then the project oversight. So, um, a proposal was provided to the town of Rhinebeck for consideration um, pending approval. We will uh, coordinate that with Mr. Fitzpatrick if, in fact, you elect to uh, retain our services. I, I have it here. I just found it. Um, sure. We'll give it to John to get copies. Sure. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions if you have. If not at this time, I'm uh, reachable anytime by cell or email, and uh, we're very close. We do lots of work in the in the area, so Those numbers very familiar. are on your proposal, your cell number. Yes, sir. And it's all in there. Yes, sir. Uh, Bruce, are we getting other bids also for uh, this work? Yeah, we have. Uh, <clears throat> Up to the okay, mic. I don't care who yet, but we are getting other bids. At least two Okay. We, we like to pick brains, and, and I know you don't like to give prices, but <laughs> can you give us a ballpark feel? For well, it's very hard to, do, to, to price up the abatement without knowing exactly what we're dealing with and how much of it there is. Okay. Um, you really need to do the, the initial investigation, the, the inspection portion first. To identify and you have a price for that uh, I think it's very competitive price um, and uh, once we know what we're dealing with how much of it and I, I would be able to provide you with a much better sense of the overall duration as well as the 
uh, associated costs. Okay. Why do we need abatement uh, if we're just heating, uh, fixing the furnaces? Or, uh, you do not actually at this time need abatement. You need an inspection. Right. Okay. If the inspection identifies environmental hazards, then you need abatement. New York State has strict, stringent laws about renovation projects. Any commercial industrial buildings in New York State, any type of renovation, repair, remodeling, demolition, any type of those activities require a pre-construction uh, uh, environmental assessment. That is basically what you're looking at right now. It's phase one. Us, that's a requirement. You need us to first come in, see what you're doing. I have walked the, uh, the building already with Mr. Fitzpatrick. I identified and understand the scope of work. Some of your scope of work does impact suspect materials, replacing the boiler downstairs, replacing the associated piping, which has highly suspect pipe wrapping insulation on it. At the very minimum, that insulation may be impacted, in all likelihood, by the anticipated project. If, in fact, that we find that to be uh, asbestos containing and greater than 1% asbestos by definition, then you would have to remove those portions of the asbestos containing material prior to disturbance. So some of the heating pipes may have. My, uh, I would, in, in seeing it, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've been doing this 12 years now, um, done thousands of inspections. Uh, I would almost guarantee you that the, the insulation is, and the, of the age of the building, um, is ACM, as we like to say. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to remove all of it. You only need to remove what is going to be potentially impacted. If it's in good shape, then it can remain and be monitored. This is, this is Thanks, Paul. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> All right, great. Thanks, John. Uh, we're going to, before we go to uh, item two for the presentation, we're going to go to um, back to the public hearing. It's uh, 7 o'clock now, so um, we're going to go to item E, which is the core group public hearing, local law for the amendment of uh, town code chapter 125 zoning. And um, at this time, I'll open the floor for that uh, public hearing. Anybody has any comments? It's fine. Or if uh, it's Michael here, you want to? You, you want to? Yeah, uh, never mind. <laughs> Didn't know if you wanted to describe it. We have the applicant and planner here. They can make a presentation if that were good. If there isn't anybody in the audience that is here for the public hearing, I don't think that presentation is going to add anything new for the, uh, to what the board is doing. Okay. Are you guys interested in making a presentation or? Okay. So can I make a motion to close the public hearing? You have a motion to close the public hearing? Do we have a second? Second. second. <coughs> All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? That is so moved. Shall we go? Um, John, you have an item that would uh, approve it. Is there an item on the agenda? Yeah, it's item four. Item four. We'll just, Might just go right to it, right? Item four, we're going to skip. We're going to kind of jump around here. We're going to go to item four for business, and that's resolution um, 2013128, an adoption of proposed local law. Do we have a number for that, John? We don't need a number for you it. Don't, right? You don't need a number for it. A uh, number uh, dash for 2013, the amendment of town code chapter one. 25 of the zoning. Um, does the board request me to read this or? John Lyons can give us the. You want to talk about it, John? Yeah, I'll okay. just give you an outline. I sent you an email a little bit earlier in the week, or I guess at the end of last week, um, with the 
you've, uh, with the public hearing closed and with your already having received comment back from the Dutchess County Department of Planning that this is a matter of local concern, you are in a position to move forward with completing your seeker review and then proceeding with adoption of the um, proposed local law tonight, if that's what your desire is. Um, with regard to the seeker review, um, Art Broad uh, completed and provided to John, I hope you did receive it, John, it, yeah. um, part two of the environmental assessment form. Uh, all of the questions that were set forth on that form have been answered no with regard to um, potential, significant potential adverse impacts. As a result of that, it was not necessary to uh, complete part three of the environmental assessment form. So you're now in a position to be able to make your determination of significance in connection with this matter. There is a draft uh, negative declaration um, that should be on your desk, um, which is that would be, uh, if you adopt it, the conclusion of the seeker review, it would be a statement by the town board that it's taken a hard look at the potential adverse impacts of this action and that it has determined that the proposed action being the enactment of the amendment, that it does not uh, pose any significant adverse environmental impacts. Um, if you adopt that, that is the end of your seeker review. And then the following portion of your procedure would just be going through um, the adoption process. You've had, you have a proposed um, local law which has been on your desk um, for uh, a while now. Um, I did some work with Joe and uh, it, since your last meeting, I think, and um, there were a slight amendment was made to the law. This is actually before the version that you got on your desk. But anyway, this um, the amendment was changed to just make sure that it specifies that not only is the law being amended, but also the zoning district map is being amended. And arrangements were made by the town to have a new zoning district map prepared by the Dutchess County Department of Planning. And I think John has those in his files. <coughs> the new zoning district map will be attached to the proposed amendment. Um, I've also prepared for you uh, a resolution, a uh, draft resolution for you to consider tonight. It folds everything together. It contains um, the end of the seeker rev review in that it, um, it provides for your adoption of a negative declaration if you choose to do so. And then it also provides for the adoption of this uh, local law and provides for some instructions for John just for um, finishing out some of the procedural requirements. So we just make one adoption. We don't do an adoption for each of those. The, you can the, just, no. by adopting one resolution, it includes both your seeker and your legislative actions. Okay, and uh, includes the map. We don't need any separate approval for the maps or anything? No, no. It, the map is included in the, okay. in the law that you're enacting. This is under tab four, if you guys are looking for it. Um, so do we require to read this out or want me to read this out loud? Is this, uh, Say that again. Should Tom. I read this to the, the resolution? Yeah. No. Well, you should take up the negative declaration first. Okay. And just, you know, find out if there's any discussion amongst the board members on the proposed draft negative declaration and just find out if you have a consensus with regard to that. And then if you do, you, could, you should go ahead and I don't know what your usual practice is, whether you read the entire resolution or Typically your, not, just a motion and second to approve the negative okay. declaration. Well, I'll summarize for the record, I'll summarize what the resolution is. Okay. The beginning part of the resolution is simply traces the procedural history of this matter um, and uh, just describes how we came to the, this point today. It describes your compliance with the general municipal law circulation requirements. It, com it describes your compliance with the seeker requirements and then it describes your compliance with the requirements for adopting a, an amendment to your zoning law in <coughs> accordance with the provisions of the municipal home rule law. A copy of the um, negative declaration is attached to the resolution as an exhibit. Another exhibit to the resolution is the proposed local law itself with the new zoning district map attached to that. So we have a motion and second to 
accept the negative declaration um, motion. Motion. Second. I'll second. Uh, so any discussion from the board? Yeah, my only concern uh, is that uh, on, on the uh, escrow, at, at least my calculation is that we're up to about $3,400 uh, in uh, uh, professional fees. Uh, I don't know what tonight is going to cost. Uh, I think the applicant gave us $3,000. Uh, I would be uh, not concerned if I knew that the applicant will uh, reimburse the town for the actual cost. If uh, then, uh, I think it's fine. I think uh, uh, so. I see an affirmative shake of yes. head, and on that basis, I'm fine. I think tonight, Joe, uh, the only expense associated yes. uh, for an, uh, uh, an hour's worth of time. Right. Whatever. So we got to speed up. <laughs> Any further comments? Uh, so let me. Do we have an open motion or? Let me uh, okay. redo that motion as a motion and second to adopt uh, the proposed local law to, uh, number to be determined 2013, uh, the amendment for the town code chapter 125 zoning. So that's a, take a motion. Motion. And then a second. Second. Okay. Uh, any further comments on this? We'll do it by roll call. Uh, if there's no further comments from the board, so uh, by roll call, the supervisor votes aye. Uh, council person uh, spends you? Yeah, aye. Aye. Council person Washburn? Aye. Council person Gelb? Aye. And uh, council person Fox is absent, so uh, the motion is so moved. Thank okay. you. Thanks, John. Thank Approved. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have um, a second presentation tonight that'll uh, be about the Affordable Housing Committee's proposed affordable housing laws and the next steps to be followed up. So, Joe, you want to introduce Yes, uh, the uh, Affordable Housing, Open Space and Affordable Housing Committee has met diligently every two weeks uh, for uh, uh, many months. Uh, and we do have a uh, product that uh, should be considered. Uh, Jonathan Mensch is going to uh, describe what uh, uh, the committee is recommending. Next steps, uh, I believe, uh, after the presentation is to decide who and what kind of review we want uh, from it from uh, professionals. And so I'll let Jonathan uh, make the presentation and then I want to talk about uh, next steps on how we get this uh, implemented. Hi, uh, I'm Jonathan Mensch from the Open Space and Affordable Housing Committee. Thank you, Joe. Um, and uh, to take a quick step back, the history of this is that when the new comp pen and, and the zoning were passed uh, back at the end of 2009, uh, there was draft language that had been created and some draft concepts that had been put into place around affordable housing. Uh, at that point, the, uh, the board's feeling, though, was that this was just a starting point and this was an area that needed some more work. Um, our committee was formed as a result of this, and we spent the time since then as Joe mentioned, uh, meeting regularly and taking a look at a variety of, of different strategies and some potential avenues to uh, uh, that, that could make sense in Rhinebeck. Uh, at the end of this process, we've come up with a, a series of, of initiatives and, and strategies that are included in some draft language um, that uh, we've now, uh, we now have ready really for review. Um, I wanted to just give you the, an overview of, of sort of the the key points uh, in terms of in terms of what we're what we're proposing. Um, uh, to start with, a lot of what we looked at was very complex, and a lot of different uh, municipalities, mostly much larger than Rhinebeck, uh, nationwide, they were tough to administer. Uh, they were very complicated laws, and we took a look through a lot of that. And at a certain point, we took a step back and decided that. What made more sense, at least from where we were looking at it, 
was to create something that was fairly simple and something that was pretty easy to administer so people could understand it and it could be put into place and and uh, and and be uh, 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 it wouldn't be it wouldn't be an area of, of confusion um, what we've done is we've broken really uh, the the program into two pieces. The first is a uh, mandated building on site for developments in higher density areas. Uh, this is for units of, this is for developments of 10 or more units. Uh, when I say higher density, I mean the R6000, which translates to about quarter acre zoning, and then also the active senior housing district, which is a floating zone that allows for 120 housing units. Depending on which district it's in, it would be 50, 40, or 30 acres, whether it's in the 10 acre, the five, or the, uh, or the village gateway district. So it's much higher density development than is allowed uh, elsewhere in town. So under those two, if somebody were to develop 10 or more housing units, there would be a mandate that 10% of them be built as affordable housing units on site as part of that development. Uh, what we've also done though is look to create a program that provides a pool of capital for either building additional affordable housing or buying actual existing housing stock and turning it into affordable housing or workforce housing, which is what we've been calling it, um, whether those are existing apartment buildings or potential single family homes. Uh, this would be a program that would provide the money to buy it and then keep it affordable uh, in perpetuity. And in terms of defining what is affordable under what we're proposing, it's for a for sale unit, it needs to be, for somebody making 100% of the area median income, they need to be able to own that house or that apartment by spending 30% of their annual income on real estate related costs. That includes a mortgage, that includes taxes, that includes any common charges. So you take what somebody makes at 100% of the area median, dedicate 30% of it, and that's what that housing unit could be sold for. Uh, in terms of the rental units, we're using the same basic equation, but we're doing it at 80% of the median. So somebody, what somebody would be paying in rent on an annual basis would not be more than 30% of 80% of the area median in income. And that varies also by the size of the household. Uh, median incomes for larger households are higher than median incomes for smaller households. Uh, so a smaller unit would be less expensive because it would be calculated off of a smaller number of people that were living there. The way the program is conceived, people would apply for one of the affordable housing units, whether it's a rental unit or a for sale unit, and they would then be evaluated using a series of criteria. The first of which is they need to meet the income requirements. Um, but for people that pass the income requirement, they would then be evaluated using a point system. And that includes things like seniors, volunteers in the town, town residents. There's a whole list of, of different um, uh, uh, qualities that an applicant could possess that then gives them a certain score. For the administrator of the, of the uh, program, which in our case is Hudson River Housing, uh, they would then evaluate the different applicants based on how they scored using this set of criteria. And the point scoring system is the same as what we've agreed to in the agreement with the gardens. Yeah, and as I've said in the past, the, going through the exercise that we went through with the gardens was very helpful because we were actually dealing with a, with a real world situation. Um, so it gave us a chance to put into place a lot of these things, get a reaction from the developer. Um, and we used a lot of these as, as the framework for what's now in this proposed law. Um, but in addition to what I just described, we're also proposing a couple of other things. The first is that in order to provide this pool of capital that would be used either to build affordable housing or buy the existing housing units, we're proposing that every new house that'd be built in town uh, pay a fee of a dollar per square foot, which would go into the affordable housing fund. So if somebody builds a 2,500 square foot, there's a $2,500 fee that's associated with that building and that goes into the fund. Um, as I said, for the larger developments in the higher density districts, there would need to be a uh, uh, affordable housing or workforce housing units built on site. Um, in addition to the dollar a square foot, we're proposing a density bonus structure. 
and this density bonus structure would apply to developments of 10 or more housing units in the five, 10, and 20 acre districts. And though for those districts, a density bonus would be available of up to 30% on uh, above the, the, the baseline density by paying a, a fee of $3 a square foot for every unit that was being built as a density, called a density bonus unit. So if somebody under under existing zoning could pay, could build 10 houses and they wanted to build 11, they would pay for that 11th house $3 a square foot. They would also be paying a dollar a square foot for all of the first 10. That density bonus would be capped at 30% of the underlying district. And we, we limited it to only larger pieces of land uh, with 10 or more housing units on them because these are the pieces of land that could be more master planned. Um, there's the four-step conservation process that would be followed. Uh, the, the area that would be dedicated for uh, development would be identified through that process. And it was our view that that would support uh, a, slightly, a slightly higher amount of development in exchange for the contribution of the funds to support the affordable housing program. Um, uh, Jonathan, let me just make the point. This committee did not dream up the concept of a density bonus. That was in the um, uh, zoning law um, as part of this sketch for affordable housing. What the committee did is to fill it out because it was never uh, stated in the uh, zoning law what the density bonus would be, that there would be a density bonus. So what this committee has done is fill that out with a 30% uh, uh, increment. And I think the committee, I know the committee was <coughs> unanimous in agreeing that the appropriate number would be 30%. And, and one, one thing that's important um, too is that we really felt that it was important to put something into place that would not be overly onerous on the front end. We're trying to get a program up and going. And there's an opportunity then to build on this over time. Uh, we're in a situation now where obviously it's still a very depressed housing market. Um, it costs more to build a house than you can sell a house for. So a lot of what we're talking about is a structure. And that structure then can get built on over time. If the housing market improves and, and, and there's a situation in which we can raise, especially the density bonus fees, that's something that we'd be in support of doing. Um, but we're trying to put sort of a structure in place and then, again, build on that over time. Uh, just as a point of reference in terms of the density bonuses, I'd come up with a sheet that um, uh, we'd all looked at. And here, this is a, I'll give you the guys this. This is what, So what this does is we all wanted to take a look at what does this really mean from a practical perspective. We're talking about 30%. What does 30% mean? The first is to look at the three different districts in terms of the underlying density, uh, the five acre, the 10 acre, and the 20 acre. And what would the minimum acreage be for inclusion in the density bonus program? So for the five acres, it basically it's the underlying density multiplied by 10. So the the Five acre district, it would be 50 acres. So that would, under the base density, there would be 10 units. Uh, the maximum would be then 13 if the full 30% of the density bonus were uh, were, were applied for. Um, in the 10 acre, it's 100, again, 13. In the 20 acre, it's 200. Uh, and again, the housing units would go from 10 to 13. The, the next are two examples of what would this mean at, uh, at first 200 acres and then 300 acres. So this is somebody that has 200 acres of land in both the five, 10 and 20 acre districts. And the next is somebody has 300 acres of land and how does that translate? Um, it, the, you know, the way it works is pretty self-explanatory, but the difference is for, just to use the, the, the 10 acre in the middle, uh, the 200, uh, 200 acres at 10 acres would be 20 units. If somebody were to take advantage of the 30% 30, 30 density bonus, it would 
go up to a maximum of 26 units. So rather than being able to build the 20 units, they could build 26 units. Um, the same example with 300 acres, rather than being able to build 30, they could build 39. Um, obviously the, the numbers are much less on the 20 acre district, they get higher in the five acre district. Um, but this is just, as I said, an example. Of what does this mean um, in a hypothetical piece of property? And I guess, as Joe said, we're, what we're wondering uh, is, uh, in terms of the draft language and, and the concepts, what are the next steps? Um, what would we want to have uh, sort of what would the review and, and, and approval and approval process look like? And sort of where should we be going from here? I think one possibility is to have uh, the planner who worked on the uh, comprehensive plan to review uh, the draft. And the draft's about 34 pages of double space uh, uh, to see how it fits in, whether he sees any glitches in it. Uh, we would try to find out, uh, get an estimate of the price for this review. And then I guess the other thought is maybe after that to have an attorney uh, uh, review it, uh, we could either use the attorney for the town or the attorney for the uh, uh, planning and zoning board review it. But we think we're ready for that review. Now I can put in each of your boxes a copy of the uh, draft. Uh, uh, tomorrow or the next day. But do you, I guess the question I'm asking is do you want us to go ahead and try to get a price from uh, uh, the planner who worked with the uh, board, uh, I'm thinking of Ted Fink, to uh, review the uh, uh, draft? Is it Graham or Ted? I forget. <laughs> There's a Graham and a Ted. Both. Yeah, well, there were both. I think Sally thought it was primarily Ted, and I would uh, use uh, uh, Ted on this. And I would envision this process is going to take a couple months, so I think we can we still do our own research about density bonuses and sure. talk to people. Are the different boards, the CAB, planning board, zoning board, will they weigh in? I guess I have questions about density bonuses and I want to make sure <clears throat> that they're answered. Now to, to the, uh, Michael sat in on some of our uh, meetings and gave input, but certainly uh, I think as many people as possible ought to look at this. Uh, uh, it is a major change in having everybody who uh, is doing construction or alteration uh, before they get their CFO would uh, uh, pay some fee. Can you, I'm sorry, could you tell me again, it's $1 and then what's the next dollar amount per square foot? Oh, you, for the density bonus? Yes. Three. Three. Uh, just Ted was the one, he, he drew up the maps of what something could look like at different densities in certain areas. So he was the guy who kind of kept the picture going during the comprehensive plan and zoning of what it would look at look like. So um, I'm for him to be part of that. Um, I mean, this draws up different scenarios throughout the town. So we have to make sure that the zoning reflects the comprehensive plan too. Let me find, try to find out from him an estimate of what we're talking about. Right, right. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot more complex than the way it sounds here because you're not putting into different factors like soils, steep slopes, and all that stuff. You know, yeah, no, we're not there. That's, that's going to make it even a whole different. We're, we're really trying to keep it Yeah, and I think, simple. That, right. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. that, would, that would pertain, I suppose, when somebody has an application on, not really at this point in time, I guess, right? Yeah, and I mean, we, we have it set forth in the language that these would need to be buildable yeah. lots. So they would be subject to all of the review um, that would be associated with any planning board application. And I think there's a deduction, if I remember right, in terms of the allowable density for steep slopes. 
uh, in the five acre. I don't think it's there for the 10 and the 20, okay. um, but the amount of gross, of gross area that a possible um, area that was being developed would have would be, the, the, those would be subtracted from right, that. Right. Um, and I think the idea behind that was that um, the impacts, uh, the building impacts, just by definition, if you've got higher underlying density, would be greater right. on a piece of property in a, than in a lower density area. Right. Okay. Any other comments? No, thank you. I'm, I'm, I, I do wanna, again you, compliment the committee because they really have. Uh, so, you need, do you need hard. approval for? For us to move forward with Ted Fink, or do you want to do something? Going to get a price? Yeah. Yeah. Let me get back to the board um, with a number. Yeah. Uh, for the, the planner, an attorney review, or just planner. Well, I think if if we want to get a price from an attorney, we got to decide which attorney we want to uh, use uh, on this. Um, but I don't think we have to decide that at this point. Uh, we can wait until the next meeting, but hopefully we can get Ted started uh, soon. Yeah, and th we've, I mean, we've obviously just been through the conceptual review, but we've reviewed many times now <laughs> the draft language. Uh, I mean, this is just our committee review. This is not the outside attorney review, yeah. but we've reviewed it for what we think is clarity and concept. Um, so it's but we've we've sort of taken it as far as we can take it um without um, yeah, getting right. some so totally yeah. yeah a lot of work thanks for that appreciate it sure you guys, so. all right good all right um Cynthia's here. Cynthia, we had we had a public comment period that we had to kind of. Okay, it's all right. But uh, Ms. Phillips would like to make a, a short public comment about the concern she had, so we kind of uh, hope put it short. Yeah, Ms. Phillips. Uh, my name is Cynthia Phillip. I live in Rhinecliff, and I used to be a regional planner and. Uh, I'm, I'm worried about the uh, fairgrounds. I went to the hearing that was held by the village recently, and they seemed to think that they had so, sole jurisdiction over what would happen on the uh, fairgrounds. They are reviewing the kinds of activities that can be held there, and they're thinking of beefing them up enormously and having... Uh, not as much emphasis, although as the year passes around, we notice that the things, very few things that are closely attached to farming. But this uh, seemed to be, to me, what they were planning. Uh, it seemed to be private enterprises that the people on the board knew and that they were good, going to be good fellows and so forth, but this is not the way good planning works and it's not the way uh, good government works because anything can happen to a person. Uh, so what I wanted, I asked them, I uh, asked them uh, why uh, Rhinebeck hadn't been alerted to this. And they said, well, they could come like anybody else and I think that this is a very wrong way of going about it. And so I come here tonight to alert the board to the fact that they are planning to have a very much stepped up, very much private enterprise type of Set thing there at this hearing. And there were a great many people there, but the uh, dominance was with what the board was thinking about very strongly and they couldn't see any reason why because the fairgrounds are indeed mainly in the village but it's not a village thing by its very name the duchess county fair it is a regional event and so that i would hope that this board would take it up with them and it's because the, the, uh, there will be things going on, not just, of course, at fair time, but all around the clock. And of course, the 
people are hoping that they will get huge crowds all the time. And it impacts, certainly it impacts the people who live in Rhinecliff as I do because of the noise and the light and noise travels a very long distance. But it also, the traffic patterns as anybody who was trying to get through town when the cars were here, it was a hard thing to do. Uh, so I would hope that the, I think that probably one of the most appropriate ways for, uh, to enlarge the discussion is for the town board to ask to be represented in some way in their discussions. And then uh, I think that the people of the town should be alerted to it because I think that we, it's a very, very important thing in our village and in our town and that it should be looked at from a regional point of view and all of the various impacts. It is not a simple thing. I'm also aware of the fact that the fairgrounds are and have been since I think 1835 when it began a private entity. They are not a governmental entity. And so I suppose they can do what they want. But there are limits on their charter, I'm sure, and I think they should be looked into. I think it's a very, very serious uh, issue for the whole of Northern Dutchess County and even beyond. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Since we're on a public comment period, would anybody else like to speak about it? <coughs> All right. We're going to move on to, um, we have uh, liaison reports. Anybody have anything to talk about about the committees? Uh, well, let me uh, just say again with respect to affordable housing that um, we are very close to uh, selling the first two units of uh, affordable uh, housing. Uh, I am informed by the administrator that uh, uh, there are uh, people who have expressed interest and uh, uh, are about ready to go to contract. So that's, that's good news. That's good. Great. All right. Uh, so tonight we had uh, assigned for uh, departmental audit reports. Um, anybody want to? Uh, start with their audit reports. Sure. I uh, audited the planning uh, board for Joe because I didn't, none of my departments had income. Um, and I have a very, everything here that I could present to the clerk. I uh, had them pull all the applicants, all the fees and checked all the deposits and everything balances out perfectly. It's very well organized and uh, I made sure that the money was collected and deposited and accounted for. And, and it's here, of the uh, 19 applications for permits and then some um, subdivision um, stuff, four of them. So it's nicely accounted for and it all balances out. All the backup is here. Um, do I turn it in to the clerk? Or? Yeah, just give it to John. Uh, I had zoning, by the way. I don't have the reports on me, but I shall hand them over likewise. Will anybody else? Our planning board clerk did a uh, great job pulling together the uh, information for me and uh, the money seems to be all there. It's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> I checked the uh, building uh, department. Uh, Judge Sanchez, uh, uh, Gina is, has checked, is checking uh, Judge Kane. Uh, with respect to the building department, I spot checked it for uh, uh, two months and everything uh, jives uh, uh, that's supposed to. Uh, I must say um, it's unfortunate we haven't really talked about this in the uh, uh, draft audit report by the uh, controller. Uh, it says that the building department uh, does not check uh, or has not checked uh, uh, the, uh, um, re its receipts and money it turns in against the monthly report that the uh, uh, clerk uh, uh, puts out. Now, uh, that spoke to a period before 
mid-2012, and that was changed. Sorry, which department, Joe? A building. That was changed in 2012, and uh, uh, since mid-2012, it's been checked every month. Uh, and uh, uh, the check, I believe, has been thorough. Again, my spot checks, uh, everything jives. With respect to uh, Judge Sanchez's uh, operation and uh, clerk, uh, everything uh, checked out for the uh, uh, months that I spot checked. I am still uh, highway uh, doing it. I uh, 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 was slow. I think I was a little confused as to whether I was going to do it or not. Uh, but I'm mostly through with uh, that. And uh, at the next meeting, I'll, uh, I'll do that. So let me give these to John. Uh, John, I think the uh, Office of Clerk Administration will call for these. In the past two years, they have asked for our audit reports for the Justice Court. Anything else? Um, I'm working on REC. I, the uh, requests that I made to the business office, they're working on them. I haven't gotten them yet. Um, because the state auditors already crawled through REC and we actually charged them the three dollars to go into the pool when they wanted to use it. Um, but the, we charged the auditors. Yes, yes. <laughs> so um, I think just no but free lunch. We, we didn't have any problem there. But so what we're looking at are uh, checks. Did any of them bounce? Uh, were any of them for partial payment? And were any of them held? Um, and were they made good before the participants started the programs? So that, that's the thrust of what we're doing this year, um, because everything else is going through. So I'll let you know when I get everything in. Great. So I think the three things that are missing are Rec Highway and uh, uh, Judge Kane is what we got to follow up on. Okay. All right. Appreciate it. We're going to move on to business. Uh, item one is a resolution approving abstract five vouchers V419 through V468. Motion. Second. Discussion? No. Nope. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Item two is a resolution approving the pre preliminary capital projects for 2013 abstracts. Motion. Second. Any discussion? Nope. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Item three is a resolution approving the budget transfer amendments and amendments. Uh, motion second. On motion. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Sorry, is that a set? Ta I know I've seen this, but I I'm missing the tab. Tab, oh, tab three. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no. No discussion for me. Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. Ye uh, you have a comment for it? Just a question. Violet Day. Violet Day? Is that, is that on hold? Yeah. We're, what we're doing is we're using, we, we didn't get the program completely right, in so place, so we're using the, the uh, Civil War anniversary, what is it, 150 years? Yes. Um, so we're, we're working on that. So maybe next year for Violet Day? Yeah. Great. Uh, opposed? That's so moved. Um, moving on to item five, we did four earlier, a resolution approving printing costs for excerpts of the town code for the Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals. Motion and second. Motion. Second. All in favor, aye. Uh, aye. Just a, a question, John. This so doesn't include the binders, the, the loose leaf binders, right? This is just the printing cost. Pardon me? Just the printing. So should we maybe increase or this because we need binders uh, to buy a couple hundred dollars so we can complete it and uh, uh, have binders in which these loose pages will be put. Is this going to be um, removable? Yes, okay. that, that's why we need three whole binders so they can punch the uh, uh, pages. This will be just like what we get from the uh, uh, official code where you throw out the old pages and you put in the new pages. 
and hopefully that's the way we can keep up with it. And indeed, I think we just got some new pages uh, in uh, I see distribution. So maybe before we have it uh, printed, we can insert the uh, uh, new pages. Uh, uh, so it's up to date uh, with the copies. Um, do you? Um so maybe we should take the low bid and increase it by up to $200 to include the cost of buying binders. So I would so amend the resolution. Uh, how about just not to exceed, well you want to increase it just by 200 you said? Yeah, so not to exceed uh, uh, $574. Or 600 is good too. Anyway. Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 Oh, that's so moved. Item six is a resolution with authorizing requests for the uh, New York State DOT for the reduction of the speed limit on Route 308 west of Route 9. Motion in a second. A motion. Second. I guess we're, we're considering reduction. Yeah, this is because of the, the um, safety with the park. We're going to move the entrance to the library closer to the to the village, and the traffic study that was done uh, felt that people aren't slowing down soon enough. Kathy had pointed out it's not really 308; it's West Market Street, so we need to amend the request that way. Um, and all this is going through the channels to to request the state to change the the speed limit, so it's as Safe. From there to the highway garage. Yeah, so it's a safety issue. Oh, this is from the park to the highway garage we're yeah. talking about? Yeah, coming up the hill, so they slow down coming up the hill. We're going down the hill. Yeah, we're going down the hill, yeah. Is there, is there, and there's a cost incurred for that? Pardon me? There's a cost incurred for that? Cost. No. Okay, there's no cost. The cost to relocate the entrance, but not to change the speed limit. But I gather we can just ask the state to do it. It's up to them as to whether they're going right. to do it. Right, right. We're just going, starting the motions now. So, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, it's so moved. Item 7 is a resolution authorizing the creation of a dog park capital project and transfers the transfer of funds to the same from capital project H43-59. Motion and second. Motion. Second. Um, well, a year ago, we started the dog park thing. Uh, if you read the Observer, you saw Paul Piestro's uh, letter stating that we're starting to work on the fundraising. The chain link that we'd gotten donated was rusty, eight foot high, and it worked well on the soccer field or something, but really doesn't work well with the, um, the dog park. So originally, I went back to my notes and originally said it probably cost $5,000. It takes take us three years to get it back with the fees. Uh, the fundraising should speed that up a little bit. There's 130000 in that fund right now. That's the Stone Church Rec Fund. Right. Yeah. And um, so I'd like to asked for $5,000 to get the park going to put the fence up. Um, the fairgrounds, as you know, is stopped allowing dogs in. Yeah. So give a little more incentive to move on this. The um, Red Hooks, well, we saw the, t the law. They're finishing up their end of it. And the intermunicipal agreement's in shape, so. I thought we already approved 5,000, but maybe it well, never got through. So we're talking about the same 5,000. Yeah, yeah, it's the same money. I thought we had approved it too, but I couldn't find it in a minute, okay. so. Uh, so just so you know, capital project H4359 is a Stone Church Recreation Capital Fund, which is also where the park is located, and there's 100 and 135 $135,997.21 in that project fund line now. Yeah. So. And the, the other reason I wanted to create the separate capital fund is, is so that when we get 
the fundraising, we have a place to put it when, when it, as the money comes in Great. and the fees. So. Okay. So there's a motion and second. Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, so moved. Uh, item eight is a resolution authorizing the clerk, a clerk for the um, conservation advisory board. Motion. Second. Any discussion? Um, this is the, the the CAB is a board, and um, th there's a lot of work that they do as volunteers that no would be much more appropriately handled by a clerk. Um, they're suggesting that two to four hours a week using the funding that's already in the budget to start and uh, see how it goes. It would be one of, uh, after talking to Shelley, there's two people that would be suitable for that, the either the zoning or the, the building department secretary or clerks, whatever there. Um, otherwise, we'd have to change people's titles. They're the ones. Talking civil service appropriate. Yeah, yeah. Are both of them open to considering it? Uh, we we hadn't gotten your authorization, so. Okay. Yeah, I think we ought to go into executive session and discuss the uh, appropriateness of uh, uh, who we should ask. Okay, but could we can we do that when we in the executive session? I, I mean, well, yeah. well, the the first part of this is: Are we going to do it? Yeah. The second part is who's going to do it. Right. Well, yeah, exactly. We've got to create the position, then we're going to approve who's going to have the position. And, that's, uh, and, and Jeff had given you copies of um, what the person would do. I believe that's... Right. We just really got this, so I haven't really had a chance to... Uh, this isn't a lot of money. Think it through. Uh, I understand we're talking two to four hours. I just want to make sure it doesn't... Grow, I must say, uh, uh, when I uh, did the legislation to convert the, this group from a uh, council to a board, I never thought nor presented that there would be this ramification to it. Uh, so uh, um, I think we're stuck with uh, having to uh, do it, but it certainly was unexpected to me. Well, all right. Um, so uh, let's have a motion and second to approve. Um, we have I a think motion we and made second. The, we did, we right. Sorry. Motion. So um, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, it is so moved. And then we'll discuss in the, the right. name. Yeah. Item um, nine is a resolution. Yeah. I mean, we could talk about it's not going to be much money. It just gives support to the group. I mean, it's not something that really. I think we have to do, have to do it. It's a statutory okay, board that right. are we still talking about the yeah, CAB? Right. It's also something that was um, uh, part of the comprehensive plan for I have no uh, problem with forward that. on the so Anyways, right. Moving on to item. Item nine, a resolution authorizing the Clearwater to a dock at Rhinecliff. Now, we had approved that last meeting. However, we have to, uh, we weren't clear with the date. So um, the dates will be um, uh, authorizing the Clearwater to dock at Rhinecliff on July 18th and July 19th of 2013. Motion and second. Motion. Second. Any discussion? There's two different dates on this resolution. Is yeah, we had a, we had approved the 31st okay. and 1st earlier, and now we do have to approve the 18th and 19th. Right. Um, so, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? That's so moved. Um, item 10 is a motion resolution accepting the bids for the sale of the used town trucks. Motion and second. Motion. Second. Uh, want to talk about that, Bruce? Or? What do we? Th think of these, we think these are, uh, and I'm just really talking about the high bids, because obviously we would sell it just to the high bidder. Are, are these reasonable? Do we think we can get more for these? We, we set minimum bids with, with each of these. These exceed the minimum bids. Um, so 
we're okay with it. One of the things that we did put up was the forklift. We didn't get a bid on that, and it's probably because of the minimum bid being too high. So we'll have, we'll have to go out to bid on that again. Um, but based on these two, they're above the minimums that we had set. So you're saying you think they're fair amounts? Yeah. Um, so, so this would cut off about uh, a little bit more than 16000 of the cost of the new truck. Right. Which we think is, what, about forty? Thirty four. Thirty nine. Thirty nine. All right. So we'll accept the uh, bid for the eighty eight Ford F seven hundred truck at twelve hundred and fifty one dollars and then the two thousand and three Ford F three fifty XL Super Duty Duty Dump for fifteen thousand um, dollars. Now are we gonna sell the are we gonna sell uh, let me call it Bobby's uh, truck? before we get the new truck, or this is all contingent on getting the new truck? It, it, the truck that he's using is, is on hold. The bid on that is on hold until we get the new truck in. All the other- And that's the second item, the 2003. No, this, that's the one from the transfer station. The yeah, flatbed. Oh, okay, truck. I'm yeah. sorry. The okay. flatbed from the transfer oh, station. Oh, okay, so then there's a third truck that is right. gonna be sold. We open the bids on May 30th, Okay, that hasn't been put out to bid. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Item 11 is a resolution uh, relating to application to the Dutchess County Municipal Consolidation Share Services Grant Program. Motion. Second. Discussion? Nope. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Um, Moving on for discussion items, we have uh, the Technology Committee Chair appointment. Um, I think at our last meeting we had appointed uh, Dodd Crane to be the chair of the um, committee. Um, Dodd is not able to serve. His former company is Municity. It's bidding on this, and I think there's a conflict of interest. We pulled the charter for it, and to avoid any impropriety, Dodd wishes to withdraw, as does Dave uh, from the tech committee. Um, so that leaves us with no one in the tech committee, which is. Um, he doesn't benefit from it in any way. So I don't see what I don't believe is. so, but a former member of the uh, tech committee pointed this out to us, and I wanted to raise right. it. Um, okay. It's right. a difficult time because I am writing this um, grant for the county for our tech initiative, and yeah. it's really just yeah. me and me right now. Um, I've Okay. begged people to help me. Um, I need help writing it. Uh, we may have to hire someone to help me. Um, I have a couple of weeks to get it together. Um, let me ask you, uh, this pertains also to our, uh, it's gonna be part of our um, uh, audit response when we get the final, uh, the final um, audit from the I think I have enough so language in that audit to use in the grant. Okay, but if that's, if, he, if, it, if it's helpful to get, would Warren be helpful with this or no? I think that uh, a computer consultant would be more helpful writing the grant than Warren. But, you know, I just raise this for discussion. You know, the charter, um, I'll just give you some background. And if you yeah. guys want to, the charter was drafted in February of 2006. Um, and it calls for the technology committee to conduct activities including technical assessments and cost benefit analysis uh, for uh, a wine, any kind of technology affecting the town or the village. Um, it's a very simple um, charter, but to avoid conflicts of interest, committee members shall not sell products or services to the town of Rhinebeck or village of Rhinebeck for a period starting when they first sign up to be a member of the committee and extending until 12 months. So I think to avoid any whiff of impropriety, they'd like to step down for now. Okay. Well, um, this is because of the company he formerly owned? It was brought to our attention and I want to respect it. And Dave's an employee of that company. Right, right, but we're talking about Dodd, who is no longer an owner of that company. But 
the software that you're writing your grant for. I am not writing for the software. The town of Hyde Park okay, is. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, the hardware that you're writing a grant for, that would never be supplied by the company that Dodd was formerly associated with. No, that has with. nothing to do with, 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 my grant is the tech initiative, or the one that I'm working on is for all the infrastructure here in Town Hall. We're also writing it with the village. Um, and it would be for the central server, the mail server, the uh, dual Wi-Fi, and any units that we actually need. Um, Dodd's on the, was going to be on the tech committee. Dave is on the tech committee. Dave is really the only active member right now. Neither one feel they can serve in light of the grant that we're writing with Hyde Park and Municity. Well, the Hyde Park grant has nothing to do with the hardware that you need to help for, right? The charter of the tech committee states that committee members shall not sell any products or services to the town of Rhinebeck. We're buying it whether we buy it any through. Wh any whatsoever, even if it's unrelated to what they're working on. Joe, the municity is what we're talking about, which is Dodd's former co right, company. Right, no, I understand that, but the charter that you're reading from that says that that says that even if it's unrelated to what they're doing, they can't advise us? Yeah. It, it is related to what they're doing. They would be on the technology committee. The town is buying a software that companies they formerly worked for or owned or work for is being considered. Right, but the technology committee will It's a not very fine, they're taking a fine line. I think they're taking the high ethical road and I think we should just respect it, accept their resignations and beg for help elsewhere or hire a consultant to help me get through the next yeah. three weeks. Yeah. So I will need to, I'll go over with Shelley. I'm gonna need to hire someone to just help me pull this together. I need about 10 to 12 hours. It's unfortunate, but it's the, I think it's the right thing to do. Yeah, okay. So, their choice. Okay, so, you know, it's true, so what can you say? <laughs> um, anyways, uh, moving on. Um, historic, um, but they would, I mean, Don would take over after after this, I'm sure he'd be fine I'm with sure it. they'd yeah. both be willing to come back on, but they don't want, they're respecting the charter and how it was written. We can choose to revise it. Why would we do that? You know, it's plainly stated here. All right. It's, it's a stretch. We are buying it through a shared intermissible yeah. agreement, mm -hmm. but, okay. you know. Right. Thanks, Elizabeth. Okay. Uh, item two, it says, uh, historic preservation law. I guess we should just make it clear we're accepting their resignations from the tech committee so we don't have any members. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, as chairs. If we're completely as members. We don't have They're, any members. Well, one, okay, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. We're, we're flying solo. Okay. We can do it. Yeah. Historic preservation law. <laughs> uh, somebody brought this on? Yeah, I, I put this on. I met with... Uh, uh, um, Nancy Kelly, our historian, and Melanie Moore, who are urging the uh, board to adopt a uh, historic preservation law. Um, they uh, have indicated to me that such a law could range from you don't alter the appearance of an historic uh, building that in respects that would be visible to the public without the permission of a commission, whatever a commission is. Or uh, that would be one extreme. You don't do anything unless it's approved by this group, which I think equates to a board. Or another, the other extreme, well, the most extreme is you don't do anything because uh, this stuff has been around for several hundred years, so there's no need for it. But uh, assuming 
that was not attractive. The other thing would be, other extreme would be, you would have a uh, group of people who, if somebody wanted to change the appearance of a uh, historic building, uh, they would have to consult with this group. Uh, this group could offer their advice and the owner of the uh, property could take their advice or not take their advice. Uh, historic building is anything that's been on the National Register and in one version of uh, uh, a law, they would have power to designate new buildings or, or uh, things that haven't been put on the National Registry, but uh, uh, things that the group thinks are historic uh, buildings. Uh, they urge that uh, uh, we have down and hear from um, uh, somebody at Albany who uh, works for the Historic uh, Preservation Agency to hear what he says. Uh, he is the one who drafted uh, the, uh, a, a draft model law, which is you don't do anything unless this uh, uh, commission agrees that you can uh, do it. I had told um, uh, Nancy and uh, Melody that I would not want to proceed in this area without inviting the affected people in to hear what they have to say. But I thought before I and the board take that kind of step, which is a lot of work, that we ought to take the temperature of the board as, is this something we really want to get into uh, uh, historic preservation law? And then figure out which uh, extreme uh, we would like. Uh, you don't do anything without permission or it's just you have to consult with a group and it's up to you as to whether or not to take their advice. Village has a, ha, the village has a uh, yes. historic. How many buildings are we talking about in the town? That uh, are on? They're talking about 341, they say, is on uh, this map, uh, which it, it's the column over uh, toward the right. So it's okay. 341. Who's the guy from Albany? A uh, guy named J Julian, Julian something. Um, and I've spoken to him and he certainly is willing to come down. We talked about in the concept of a uh, 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 workshop for all interested people. But if we wanted him to come down, I would propose it's a presentation to the board first, and then we can again decide whether we want to uh, uh, do this. Is this something that we want to devote time and resources to? Well, I'm in favor of listening to what the guy has to say and <clears throat> considering some kind of um, historic preservation. Where I was concerned the last time we talked about this was that it was beyond the buildings. It was in artifacts and all kinds of things. Like what artifacts, Bruce? Anything that's in the ground. Like, can you give me an example? Like a statue? An arrowhead. Oh. Um, the, we could make it historic building preservation. Well, that we had set this up back as part of the comp plan. We formed this committee or something back then. It was called an architecture, historic architecture group. And then, then it came back up again. But the last one that I heard that came before us, they were looking to increase their scope. scope. And, yeah. and that's where I was getting a little concerned well, without knowing what it was really doing. 
I, I, I think bringing the guy in from Shippo makes a lot of sense. I think making sure that the likely um, property owners are aware of that well, also makes uh, sense. I guess we would publicize it. I uh, guess if we wanted to go ahead, I think we probably have to design a better system of communicating to the affected property owners what we're doing. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to do that. Uh, maybe an actual letter to these 341 people, which is a lot of work. So uh, let's have the guy down, if that's the consensus, hear what he has to say, and then decide whether we want to uh, go through the uh, uh, things that would be involved in uh, such a law. Great. Uh, yeah, probably a lot are there. I don't know there are. What, what other places in the town. As I say, the 341 places are listed uh, on that map. All right. I'd, I'd like to hear from them, too. Right. So I'll set up some time in uh, June for him. Pardon me? All these changes for various reasons mm -hmm. of buildings. So that I would think that I think it whatever is done should be attached to the land and the building rather than the owner. I mean I don't want may die mm. or get a job elsewhere. Yeah, that would be part of the concept is to I mean, say yes. Right, but the present owner is just to notify and we're considering something. That's who you have to notify is... Oh, yeah, but yeah. other people, I think, I would think that this is something that the town itself would be. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, if, a, a great, if there's a great many of them, right, provided the people would be interested in taking one of somebody's goddamn eyes out and putting it on the right. right, right. That's the idea. And so I think... That it, 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 It would be at a town board meeting. Anybody can come, oh, listen, yeah. and uh, we don't restrict people from no, talking. Okay, sure. Yeah. All right. Good. But I think that people would be interested. All right. Should be. Item three I put on about town board summer meeting schedule. We talked about that in the past, and last year we had had uh, one meeting per month over the summer, which is pretty common throughout the year for most towns, but for some reason we have two per month. So uh, I'd like to bring the issue up again to see if the board would be interested in going back to one meeting a month throughout the summer months. Um, seems like we have a lot of special meetings anyway, so um, to return to the fourth Monday of the month as the meeting for the month would be my suggestions. Um, anybody have any comments you want to make to that? Yeah, I posed it last time. I think uh, we... Uh need to be able to talk among ourselves uh, that uh, I do think it's important that we have two meetings a month. I asked uh, Warren what High Park uh, does. Uh, they have two meetings a month. Uh, I, I just think it's uh, um, very unfortunate that we can't uh, uh, meet Twice a month, I think, if you really want to do some work and serve the town, uh, it requires two meetings a month. So I'll propose to put it on the agenda for next month, next meeting. Well, maybe we would table it because I probably cannot be here for oh, the next Oh, that'll be perfect meeting. timing then. What? Perfect timing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my trip has been planned long in advance for the next meeting, so maybe you can well, that's put it on that's for unfortunate the first for the town. Uh, <laughs> meeting in uh, June. Um, I would urge that we check with uh, the different departments who could be affected, you know, just sure, with absolutely. our bookkeeper, make sure she's fine. Yeah. Um, okay. Highway department, anyone who might be affected. Sounds good. All right. Uh, 
staff hours i had put that on but i'm not sure if it would require executive session it's just the return of an issue with some uh, staffing hours so i'm going to hold we have executive sessions you have executive yeah. okay i'll talk about it there and then uh just so i'm not sure if it involves any personal issues so item five is filing land record declarations relating to workforce housing this uh relates to the two units that uh uh, we think are going to be sold in the gardens and I've left Tom for your signature uh, the uh, declaration uh, maybe you'll sign it uh, after the meeting have uh, John notarize your signature this just carries out uh, what we have been talking about uh, to uh, by uh, implementing the actual sale of uh, workforce houses. So I don't think it's anything new. <laughs> I'm not sure we actually need a resolution, uh, but I, I just uh, raise it uh, um, and, and that uh, would uh, say to the buyer of this workforce housing that there are these restrictions they run with the land and you are bound by uh, these restrictions any um any any public comments from the public <laughs> any further we have a motion and second let's have a motion and a second to go into executive session pertaining to personnel issues and and I want to expand that, I think, also to discuss the union contract. Okay. So motion and second? Motion. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? I don't, you, do we plan on voting on anything for that or no? Pardon me? Voting on anything or no? Uh, I don't think we have to vote. Okay. We don't have to vote? Yeah. Fred can go home? I think Fred can go home. Okay. 